Science Magazine presents Artipithecus ramidus, the most detailed picture of early hominid life. On the cover of Science, there is the partial skeleton of a remarkable human ancestor. This is Artipithecus ramidus, and a team of international researchers introduced this hominid, member of the human family that lived 4.4 million years ago, which is about a million years older than Lucy's species, and they flesh it out. And what they are telling us in these 11 articles is that it doesn't look just like us, which is not surprising, you wouldn't invite them to dinner, but it doesn't look just like a chimpanzee either, which is a big surprise. So instead of thinking of something in between a chimp and a human, we have to think of this as uh, really not a series of links in a chain as much as branches in a tree. And our branch is a very peculiar branch. We have very strange feet and huge brains. How, how did that happen? Well, we have to work our way back down our branch. And so we're getting pretty close to the fork that was between the line that led off to the chimpanzees and the line that led off to us. And Artipithecus takes us pretty far back toward that branch and informs us that the node point, the junction, the last common ancestor, was neither human nor a chimpanzee. It was something entirely different. It's living on the ground, walking upright like us, spending a lot of time walking upright. If you saw it walk by, the walk would look a lot like ours, but it can't run like us. The skeleton that we have is estimated to be around four feet tall, and to weigh around 100, 110 pounds. And so that's why skeletons are important. They allow you to get at things like stature, limb proportions, and, and all of that. And I think one of, the, one of the things that we would be most impressed by seeing, seeing Artipithecus in the, in the flesh would be the very small size of her face and brain, brain case, the very large size of her arms and hands, and this grasping ability of her feet. She had a foot with an opposable large toe. It's the first time we've ever seen this in a fossil hominid. All the rest of them, even the Lucy species, fairly early at 3.7 to 3.2, and even with footprints, in the footprints, the large toe is right in line with the other toes. There's already an arch to the foot. Artie's foot was not like that. When Artie walked, it towed off of the lateral four digits, and the large toe was off to the side, acting more in stabilization instead of in toe-off. And so it's a very different creature. And what that does, what the maintenance of that grasping foot does for you, is to open up the arboreal environment. Well, Artipithecus ramidus hands and forearms weren't as stiff as a modern chimpanzee or gorilla's. If you're knuckle-walking, going like this, you need to have a very stiff wrist, and you need to have fingers that can handle that weight and all the forces. And there's all sorts of adaptations that Artipithecus did not have. It had a much more flexible hand and wrist, so it was able to free up the hands to do other things. So it turns out that that last common ancestor was probably not a knuckle walker at all. Knuckle walking evolved independently in gorillas and in chimps. And that's really one of the biggest lessons of Artipithecus, is that we can't just take a modern animal, like a chimp or a gorilla, and use it as a proxy for the last common ancestor. Chimps and gorillas have been evolving for six and seven million years, too. And so what we're seeing here is something that we never could have predicted from either a modern human or a modern chimpanzee. The only way to learn about this creature is through the paleontological record. In addition to Artipithecus ramidus, which was the rare creature in this landscape, were over 6,000 specimens of animals that this team uncovered, ranging in size from elephants and shrews and hyenas and antelopes and monkeys to tiny rodents, owl pellets, bats. We also have snails. We have fossil wood, fossil seeds. We have fossil millipedes. We have birds. We have very small mammals, and all of these very sensitive environmental indicators build up to a picture of a woodland habitat that's now been sampled just by geological forces where the exposures of this ancient horizon are present. It's, it used to be very different from what it is today. 
The traditional view for the past 50 years has been that our ancestors arose in the grassy savannas of Africa. This is where Ardipithecus ramatus is so important. At 4.4 million years ago, Ardi shows us a creature that was walking in an intermediate way, developing upright walking, but it's not fully modern yet, and it was living in the woods. It wasn't living in the open savanna, it wasn't using tools, and its brain was the size of a chimpanzee. It used to be a closed wooded habitat full of monkeys and kudus and with a few artipithecus and 6,000 fossils plus all of the invertebrates and all of the other isotopic data from soils and things like that lead up to the same conclusion. And this is a very different conclusion, I think, than, than most people expected of the earliest hominids because many people thought that bipedality and the earliest hominids had evolved in more open savanna settings. Where I think researchers will have the most doubt about this analysis of Ardipithecus ramatus is in the proposal that it is a snapshot of the primitive member of the human family and the primitive ancestor we shared with chimpanzees and gorillas that it shows us that that ancestor did not look like a chimpanzee or gorilla. If we were a couple of chimps sitting here talking about our ancestor, we'd have very little to say because there's almost no fossil record of, of chimpanzees and there was none, in fact, until a few years ago. Uh, we now have a handful of teeth from about 500,000, which are very interesting, but they don't tell us a whole lot about the whole evolution of chimpanzees. There are no fossil gorillas either. Uh, and so if we knew these lineages, uh, we'd know a lot more about ourselves as well. Um, and partly because of this, it's been assumed that the uh, less common ancestor of humans and chimps was rather chimp-like. And it's, it, you can't deny it because you have no evidence that chimps were any different then than they are now. The significance of this is that it's earlier in time, nearer the less common ancestor. Uh, and if we want to know what the less common ancestor was, and to try and understand the forces that led to our divergence from a chimpanzee ancestor. Uh, this is much more relevant. We began to work in the middle of Washington in 1981. We really didn't know what was going to be found. This is a long-term protracted scientific research endeavor, and this kind of work does actually take decades. It doesn't take that long if you don't find anything, but we've found a great deal. We've found something like 15 separate horizons in this kilometer of rock that have yielded hominid fossils. We have over 18,000 vertebrate fossils, thousands of artifacts from multiple horizons. Ardipithecus is one snapshot within that depository, but it's the best snapshot, and it's the most detailed snapshot. It is the most data-rich snapshot. There are so few skeletons of fossil humans. There's, I don't know, four or five. Uh, and you can tell so much more when you've got a whole skeleton than when you've got a few bits and pieces. Even if you've got bits of different parts of the skeleton, knowing that they're all associated in one individual is really exciting. The interpretations that go along with it are very provoking. Some of them are undoubtedly true, I'm sure. Others will be topics of discussion for a good while. But the basic data, I think, is what really counts here. Uh, and the fact that you've got a fairly complete skeleton, uh, you've got a lot of other associated things, uh, is what's, uh, at this particular time period, is what's really significant about this specimen. I think some researchers will agree that because Ardipithecus ramatus shows these traits that are different from a chimpanzee's or gorillas, that that tells us that it inherited them from an ancestor, that those are primitive traits. Other researchers will say, no, those are changes that arose in Autopithecus ramatus's lineage, that it diverged from the ancestors of chimpanzees and gorillas and lost traits that are in their line. So this is forcing wholesale rethinking about the models of why we began walking upright, why we went through social changes that set us apart from the other apes and sent us down the path toward humanness. The name Ardipithecus ramatus is based on an afar name for ground, ardi, and ramid for root. And so if you want to think of it that way, it's kind of like the root of the ground apes. We in the Middle Awash Project try to respect the local culture by naming, when we can, the scientific name based on an afar root.
Science is published by AAAS, the Science Society.